Good afternoon and welcome to Small Business USA Masterclass. I am Colleen, the president and founder of Small Business USA. Hi, I'm Brian Carey, and the business master of the universe. <laughs> welcome to the kickoff of our marketing masterclass, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> Yeah, you know, this I like webinar that. starting off great already. Go yeah, ahead. I like to, yeah, I like to start off by giving myself a huge compliment. Because <laughs> no, that I don't get them from any others. So, <laughs> as an attorney, it's my job to warn you that my my co-host here may say things that are let's we won't call them inappropriate, but she gets excited about a topic, and she can sometimes say something that's inappropriate. I guess. I, uh, I don't know. I resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> but there's not there's no sensor button, so well, let's get started. Since you opened up that conversation and that dialogue, let's um let's get this call started, shall we? Sure. Um so I am Colleen Ferrari, small business um the owner and founder of Small Business USA, and um, many of you know me, so I am so glad to have you here today. I founded Small Business USA three years to get, years ago, but I, I'm not really sure that's what qualifies me. Um, anyone, I believe, can hang a shingle up and say they're a consultant, right? So um, I've been driving sales for businesses for over 29 years, and um, yes, I have a fabulous photographer there who clearly sees me as younger than I am. Um, so you can notice a little airbrushing going on, but um, I grew up in a small business that was sometimes uber successful and sometimes dismally challenging. So um, after leaving for my family business and running off to college, where I swore I'd never spend one more day as an entrepreneur, um, uh -huh. <laughs> I studied business and human resources, did some post-grad work with Jack Welsh and his program at U of M Business School. Um, certified by coaching, you know, all that stuff. I, I guess if I could sum it up, I'm, I've been there. I've, I've been there. So um, I know there, I've been right where you are. I've been frustrated trying to push the limit, getting past that last hurdle, trying to make my dreams a reality. So, you know, that's what Small Business USA is all about. It's about helping you get there. So um, today I'm really excited to be part of three successful business ventures, Small Business USA, Networking Golf, which our members know about, all of our members get a free membership to that, and Generating Winners. So on to you, Brian. On to me. I, def I definitely come to Small Business USA from a different perspective. I have, I have three parts of my background. I started off at, as, as an accountant that were working with some of the largest companies in America, and then I decided to go to law school and I went and I went to law school and I took the bar and I became an attorney. I had my own, my own legal, legal practice. And since then have morphed into uh, having my own business consulting practice and now combining the three things, working as a, as a business advisor an accountant and an attorney. So not only, uh, am, you know, I'm working as an advisor right now, but I've been there. I, I've, I've been the business owner. I've been there, you know, trying to wear all the different hats at the same time. And I understand the struggles that small business owners face. Well, thanks, Brian. Hey, and for those of you that don't know much about Small Business USA, here's just a quick snippet of who we, who we are. We offer a comprehensive list of services that every business owner needs in order to be successful. We found a way to make it affordable and accessible when you need it. And I think what's important to know, one of my very firm beliefs, is that the sum of the whole is more powerful than the ideas of just one or two. So Small Business USA for us is more than just a list of benefits that you get and a list of tools that we give you, but it's really about the community. So um, I, Brian, I can't stop. What, what, why should today be any different than in, uh, any other day? I can't stop talking. I want you to meet our team of advisors, and there's a few more that I haven't listed here, but um, these, are, these are the advisors that are really a part of making our master class happen and making Small Business USA happen, and um, we're going to make you an offer later today for a program that this team is really spearheading called our Marketing Master Class. Our members, you guys, you get this free, so... We, it's, you already have this included. I am blown away by our marketing program and the incredible talent that went into creating it. So now by combining this group and our marketing program, 
the Marketing Masterclass is really an unbelievable tool for not our, only our members, but we're offering that outside to um, people who have, you know, maybe aren't ready to take that step with Small Business USA. So, um, you know, I was told, Brian, to add a lot of testimonials. So how's that? You know, I follow, I follow all the rules here, but um, Cynthia is somebody who really only, she started when we first began and only took the marketing piece and really saw some great benefits from it. So should we, get, should we get started? What do you think? Sure, sure, but before we get started, it's interesting that this is PG-13 and you follow all the rules. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> it's, it's, only, it's only two minutes in. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, this is why we're here, right? Sometimes it's being an entrepreneur is like, it feels like you're climbing Mount Everest. You don't know if you're ever going to get there. You can't imagine how it's going to feel. Getting there is total up. I didn't say Brian. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good job. Good see at the sensor button. <laughs> You're there, my conscience. <laughs> um, so let's go make you successful, shall we? Um, I am doing a lot of talking here. Sorry. The past is a past. Um, I am so sick of people telling you to leave your past behind. You know, I've led a lot of people for a long time. And, um, you know, the, the people tell you start a new day. Today's a new day. What are they thinking? Come on. It's, is the past really behind you? No, the past is what got you where you are today. So I think we need to own it, the good and the bad. I agree. I mean, there, there's some part of what we've, what we've done that we need to hold on to. I mean, we've done good things along the way. We've created our successes. They've got us this far. So we don't, we don't want to throw everything out there. But we, do, we have come here today because there are some things that we, we need to change in order to prosper even more in the new year. And in life, right? Business and in life. Yeah, I mean, it, is, it really it does come down to life. I mean, people make New Year's resolutions because they want to see some, some change in their life. So they, they realize that there's something that needs to be done and they recognize it. And that's part of what we're here to do. I mean, there's a lot that worked in the past year that you need to remember too. Uh, don't always, don't be all completely negative with your resolutions. Think about some of the positive things that you've achieved in the past year. So let's just kind of dig into the past a little bit and sometimes the ugly. There's those things, well, you never really want to repeat again or let anybody find out about or become the topic of the, your next client meeting, right? Those things that you want to sweep under the freaking carpet. I don't know if we need to go to that extent, but yes. <laughs> well, speak for yourself, buddy. <laughs> yeah. You need to, you, I mean, you need to own the things that you never want to repeat, whether you heard this from Dr. Phil or every hiring manager. You know, it's true. Past behaviors are the best predictor of future performance. So if, if, in a, if you have some behaviors that have creeped into your day-to-day -day that um, are keeping you from being successful, that's something that you have to address because they're, they're, got, they're going to rear their ugly head again. So um, whether, it's a weight, whether it's a weight loss, an exercise goal, your marketing fails, you're not hitting your financial goals, there's things that need to be changed to make that happen. Yeah, I think it's so important to leverage what you know about yourself to build on tomorrow. So, so let's start leveraging, baby. <laughs> I don't know why that sounds so funny when you say that. <laughs> so let's get out a piece of paper and write down your three biggest mistakes of 2015. And by the way, you know, we'll send you some worksheets after this call so you can take the time and do this right. But right now, just take a minute and write down the top three mistakes. You got that? I'm up to nine. <laughs> I'm an overachiever. I'm an eight person. <laughs> okay, own this, people. <laughs> You'll never move forward until you take a step away from the past. But you have to know how to make, to make the right steps. So you need to own those three opportunities today and going forward in 2016. They hurt you last year, but we can't let them hurt you again this year. And that's what today is really all about. This is the hardest thing you, that, that you're ever going to do. I mean, ch change is not easy. Uh, 
And by putting together this list, you're now on the first step to making some positive changes in the new year. Uh, just, just your acknowledgement alone that there are things that you need to work on and things that you need to, to deal with to become more successful will help you get to where you want to be at the end of 2016. Uh, we we want to help you in the new year. Um, if you're on the call today, we're going to help a few, we're go, we are going to help a few people today. We have a special offer that we'll get to that is for today only. Uh, if you're not a member now, we'll give you an opportunity to save money on our program and get you started on the right foot. So I put um, Brian's email on the screen so you can all write it down and send him spam. That's great. I <laughs> love it, really. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's more about reaching out to him. Take advantage of our offer today, but we really need to make sure that you're a good fit, too. We can't take everyone. So we have a couple different programs, but we really want to make sure that um, – we're really focused on bringing the right people in and adding the right people to our boards. So um, here our marketing program says to throw in more testimonials. So here you have them. But, you know, there's some really good thing, things happening with Small Business USA. And, and um, you know, Brian is a great example. He, he started as a board member with us and now run as a on my board kind of guiding me. He's somebody, somebody who I really respected. And he runs a board. And these are just a couple – testimonials just from his board, which are pretty exciting. Thanks. Thanks for slipping those in there. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're absolutely welcome. <laughs> so let's break it down. Let's do a quick inventory of the changes you want to make this year. Just a reminder, it doesn't have to be all business. So we'll give you a few examples. Brian? Yeah. I mean, you, you know, one, let's say you didn't follow up with your contacts. I mean, I think that's uh, you know, that, that's certainly a business one, but in terms of, you know, in terms of things that don't have to, don't have to do with your business, but really do have to do with your business. You know, one of the things that I, I find with one of my board members is that they need a separation between their personal life and their business life. And that it transcends both pieces uh, of what they're trying to achieve. Uh, so, you know, your, some of your personal can creep into your business. So, go ahead. Okay. So, yeah. So, let's say you, do, you didn't follow up with your contacts. Well, this year, instead, you'll leverage a better tool or schedule to schedule the time each day. So, one of the things you always want to think about with time management is those contacts are extremely important. They can be extremely important to generating new business for you, which is going to help you increase your top line sales. So, you want to make that a priority. You want to schedule time each day to do that. I think the challenge here is if last year is what you did wrong, if your top three opportunities from last year you put in that left-hand column, our goal with the right-hand column is to – it's more of replacement therapy. It's figuring out a way that, you know, if you're not going to follow up with contacts, you're not, if you didn't remember last year, you're not going to remember this year. So the challenge is replace it with a with – a, either a tool or a behavior that you can do that is more comfortable. So if you can't remember to follow up with people and you can't remember to put them in a CRM, let's say, or, you know, you're not really good at going into that CRM, leverage a tool that's going to remind you to reach out to them or schedule every time you talk to them in email, schedule the next time you're going to do it and put on your calendar. If you're really good at following your calendar, leverage what you're really good at to overcome what you're not so good at. Brian? So you'd hopefully, you hopefully you haven't done this, but a lot of us have. I mean, we spent a lot of money, time and money on ineffective marketing. We actually see this as one of the biggest opportunities of small business owners. You're too easily talked into advertising in a day and age where everybody in everybody is pinging us with advertisements on, advertisements on a daily basis. Basically, then Colleen had an article yesterday that said there was some ungodly number of advertisements that we see each day, five to seven hundred. So that you're you're in a you're in a world where an advertising world where it's tough to get people's attention at this point. I think it's really we see business owners pretty often at this point with this particular one throwing money at a problem. I was adding up how much Small Business USA spent the first two years of marketing, and it was about a thousand dollars. 
And it's because we really, you know, there was a there was something to prove there as well. If we if we couldn't do it, if we can grow a business without spending an exorbitant amount of money, how could we teach others to do the same thing, right? But um, and we're still growing. And the truth is, you don't have to spend money to drive sales all the time. You can, but it's really the relationships that get you going. So it's figuring out what is the next step. Huh? I had to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. A, <laughs> I figured you would. <laughs> <laughs> I, it certainly works. Let's put it that way. Uh, okay. Do you want to do you want to take this um, assess? Yeah, I mean, assess what works and what doesn't work. I mean, it's spend only on the tools that have worked. I mean, it's really it's really about having metrics for your business. And you know, when, whenever you spend money, you wanna you wanna be looking to figure out what the rate of return on that spend is. So you know, to the extent that you're spending money, let's say at a minimum, you want to have a three to one return on that money that, that's hitting your bottom line. Uh, one of the great things about uh, small business USA is it, it's going to force you to think about on a monthly basis strategically where you want to go to be able to get to, to, to really to increase that bottom line and we can use your financial statements as a measure of whether what we're doing with you is working or not and if it's not working then we assess why it's not working and figure out a plan of attack with you yeah I think members you'll see in the marketing masterclass that there's, a, there's so many pieces and tools in that marketing program that we have that are going to teach you to not spend money and to be more wise and figure out the ROI. So you'll have a year of really digging into this every, every two weeks, programs every week, and lots of other great pieces to it. But it's really about making the right decisions as a business owner, and I think we kind of miss that. Okay, let's go on to the third one, Brian. Lounged around for two hours a day and ate bonbons? <laughs> well, I wanted to make the point that you've got to keep it real, right? It's, um, you know, your secret's safe with me, though, Brian. Don't you worry. Oh, no, I'm good for at least three. <laughs> it, it, you really got to keep it real. If you put something in that right column that you absolutely can't commit to, you fail, and that's what we do too often, right? When we think about New Year's resolutions, we think about when we're gonna drive change in our business, we put something in that right column that is unrealistic. I'm telling you, if I sit in front of a refrigerator and stare at a box of, of Bob Moms and, I, and don't eat them, it's not gonna happen. I'm gonna stare at that box and not eat them. The, this, the whole problem is self-control, right? So yeah. I'm not gonna keep the bonbons around. I'm not gonna buy them, but it's, you know, I, I'll share a quick story about my husband. He works out two days away, a week really, really, really hard and sweats more fluids than he intakes. This has been a problem for years. He just can't drink enough water to balance out what he needs. He ends up in the doctors. He just, you know, believe it or not, it's really bad if you don't do that. So for five years, he's had the same problem. So this year, should his New Year's resolution be to drink more water? It's not, why is it going to be any different than the last four years? And that's what we do to ourselves every single year, right? We make a New Year's resolution and we say, this year I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to work out. I'm going to do, I'm going to change my life and do this differently. You have to replace it with good behaviors and with tools. In his case, his tool is my daughter. 11 year olds love to tell adults what to do. So he said, Hey, listen, can you tell me every two day, every day, can you force me to drink two glasses of water? And she loves it. Last night, I mean, we're just so much into the new year, right? Last night, she, she ran upstairs. He was in the man cave, you know, and she said, did you drink your water yet? You can't, you know, and it was so cute. But she's, you know, he used a tool that was going to affect it, be effective and work. Whatever it is, you have to figure it out. He swapped things out in his diet that he likes that have more fluids in them. I think you have to you have to be really conscientious of replacing that right hand column with something that you can actually do. You know, we um, I hate to go to the gym, so instead of going to the gym, I have a thirty minute dance party with my daughter while we clean up after I get out of my office. It's 
fun. I'll do it with her. It's great to build relationships, and I get 30 minutes of cardio. So I think well, you get to see that at the end of the presentation. <laughs> It's so horrible, but we laugh <laughs> and it's fun, right? And that's what it's about, replacing bad behaviors with ones that you'll actually do, finding a new way to do that. We see that in our boards all the time, right? We see that, that um, business owners can't stick with it. So you either have to get it done or the business owners that are sitting around the table with you are going to help you find it, something that suits you a little bit more. So um, we get it. You know, this is easier said than done sometimes. So members, you pay for this already. This is our commitment to education for you. We will start at weeks one and two of our training program um, on the 26th of February. There'll be time to ask questions. We'll cover all 52 weeks of our program. Our team of advisors, elite advisors, are gonna be popping in to contribute and into your training and to give you the opportunity to meet more people on the team. If you're not a member, reach out to Brian and he'll find the right group to ensure that you're a great fit and you have the right fit for you. Um, if you're interested in testing the waters with this, just the marketing program and the marketing masterclass, which is a really, really cool thing. And um, I, no one is offering anything like this that can change your business as much for as little. Um, we are offering for a limited time only. We are offering um, non-members the opportunity to join for $99 a month. So I think it's a good entry into Small Business USA if you're not ready to make that change. But I think it's really, um, it's really value-added for every business owner. And members, I know that a few of you already called me about it and are excited. So I can't wait to get that started in February. Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited about it. I mean, the, the e-learning program is, is, is a tremendous tool in itself. But then combining that with the ability of having the real-time, real-world teaching of those concepts, I think is really going to cement marketing for our, for our members. I mean, it's going to take something that may be a weakness, and it, and it may not be a behavioral weakness. It may be a, it may be a conceptual weakness where it's not, not something you're very good at what you do, but you're not very good at sales and marketing. And we're going to put you in a position where you're going to be learning from the best of the best. Uh, and you're going to be developing good habits related to marketing. So true. So true. Okay. I shared the story about my husband. You have to be honest with your opportunities. Yeah, I mean, in, in Rath's book, Strength Finder 2.0, he challenged us to be true to our core strengths. We need to, we need to keep it real. Yeah, um, I think that's a great segue. Tom Rath um, said the key to human development is building on who you already are. So I want you to read the bottom of the slide very, very carefully. Um, I hate, hate, hate to sell. Anybody who knows me knows that this is the bane of my existence. I shouldn't be a business owner if I don't want to sell, but I have to. It's an important way to find a way to do what I do and soar with my strengths. I, I, you know, it's, if I want to help business owners, I have to do this. I hate to work out, but I love how it feels afterwards, but I hate it. So I want this, so I will guess I'll have to do this. Maybe it's higher, you know, I want to feel great in the elation of working out, so I guess I'll have to hire a coach to force me to meet three times a week. May, I hate to sell, so I guess I will have to find a way to hold myself accountable, whether it's, whether it's joining Small Business USA or, or whatever. So now what? It's true. I mean, it's the number one reason that, that business owners join Small Business USA. They don't want to be alone. They know that uh, they don't have all the answers, and they know that they need accountability tools to help them reach the next level. So that's one of the great things that our peer advisory boards bring to the table. They're going to bring you the advice, the account and support, uh, accountability and support from other business owners who are going through the same things that you're going through. But let's talk away about the ways that you can get this done on your own list. Soar with your strengths. 
<laughs> that, that is good advice. You, know? yep, you, you got to figure out what you're good at and leverage the hell out of it. Yeah. You got to get a little uncomfortable, but not too uncomfortable that you're not going to do this. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the important thing is when you're, whenever you're making changes, like you want to make changes in small steps and have, and have small successes to be able to show, uh, to show yourself that you're really capable of making this change. I know members that are on this call. You guys know this guy, Simon Sinek. Um, you need a big reason to change. Simon Sinek talks about your why. And I tell my members all the time to watch Simon Sinek's TED Talk. It's 20 minutes that will really kind of challenge the way that you look at your own marketing for your business. So why sells? But don't be so naive as to believe that, that why also is going to help you as well. So knowing why I started Small Business USA helps people see why this is more about making money, more, more than just making money for me. It builds trust, it answers the questions, etc. But why is important for other reasons yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, if you want to inspire yourself, you better have a darn good why to help you overcome the next challenge that's in front of you. I mean, when, when times are tough, uh, you know, it, it helps to be able to fall back on that why. Um, why are you doing what you're doing? And, and don't forget that change, becoming wealthy, trying to make something happen that you've found difficult in the past. Uh, you you got to know you, your reason why you're doing it. Are you, you know, do you want to, do you want to have a better lifestyle because you want your kids to go to a better school or you want to, you want to live in a nicer neighborhood or, or, you know, these are, these are things that, that you may want a more affluent lifestyle for. So, but understand why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and if you do, you can take your toughest challenges and move forward through them. Yeah, I think it's important to know money is not enough. If you are going after this because you want to make more money, that is never a big enough why. That money means something else. You got to dig deep and to get there. And we want you to get here in your business life, in your personal life, in your financial life. We want you to have a have the balanced life that you that you've been looking for. Brendan Burchard said, "I um, I love Brendan Burchard." Burchard, um, he said, "People say I wish I had more motivation today because then I would try something, right?" And um, Brendan said, "Motivation comes from effort, but we have our thinking backwards." The way our brain works is that dopamine, that so-called so feel-good chemical, is released the second we actually do something. So the motivation doesn't come before, it comes after. So when you're thinking about those tough challenges, the Mount Everest of the world, for me, it's actually trying to close a sale. I need to do it. I have to do it. But my why is really what's going to get me started. And once I start... And once I get there and once I realize that, you know, hey, if I sell, I'm selling because I really have the ability to help someone here. And then when you get into it, it's really not a sales pitch at all. It's about helping people get to their dreams. So I think step one is really getting started and then creating a plan you can follow, um, and, you know, using that why to go after those tough things, but creating a plan is really a big, a big part about it. So today we're gonna to talk about being smart. Everyone knows what this stands for, right? Here's what smart means to us as an accountant, and everyone wants to hear as an accountant, the accountants. <laughs> uh, but as an accountant, you know, as, as someone who looks at numbers, I mean, typically businesses overspend. They also underspend sometimes as well. So, I mean, if you're, if you're spending money on something that's generating a good rate of return for you, uh, arguably there's a case to be made that you should be spending more money on some of those things to generate more revenue. So we want you to spend money the right way in 2016. Financial mismanagement is the biggest reason that companies fail. So today we're, gonna, we're going to do a few things. We're going to help you save some money and we're going to help you reclaim your time. Does that sound good? Intense. 
<laughs> you can't blow. You can't blame me for throwing in a little plug, can you? <laughs> no, you can't. And the intent, the, the intense accounting, the intense accountant thing uh, rings true. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, marketing problem priorities. Most everyone gets wrong. I had to put that most in because I work with an with an attorney. If nobody knows that. <laughs> okay, our 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 marketing masterclass, something that, we, that that we're extremely proud of, starts in February. We'll give you a link and a special offer at the end if anyone is interested in joining. Members don't join. It's included in your membership already. But I do want to, you know, I do think this is the perfect, this is the perfect uh, augmentation to our marketing program that we have now. And, and if, if, if marketing is not your biggest strength, I think you want to be a member of this class because by the end of the year, marketing could be one of the biggest strengths you have going for you. Nice. I'm so glad you mentioned it. Um, we're so excited about this program. Um, we're taking our e-learning series and bringing nine of our elite advisors together to really teach a program and host conversations around each step of the process. It will never replace that peer advisory board that really digs in to the um, to getting you out of the weeds and what's really, you know, they dig in a lot more into your particular business. But I think what it really does is it helps you ask the right questions to get you moving in the right direction. Yeah, I mean today we, we it's all we're only we're only on for an hour, so we we can't dig into every marketing problem that's out there. But really, what we'll do is we'll look at three of the most common marketing challenges that people are facing, and things that you're probably seeing in your business. Um, you know, and part of what we're talking about is commitment. We've already talked about commitment a lot. I mean, you've got you've got to be committed to changing the course of your sales and marketing this year. You know, the second is misidentifying or overgeneralizing your customer. Um, you got to be real specific about who you're trying to reach with in in what with what message you're trying to reach them with. Um, the last one is you. You know, you've got to you have to understand the value that you offer. If you don't understand the value that you offer, you're going to have a really difficult time communicating that to anybody. So if you focus on, on, on the, uh, we'll focus on those three things in, the, in this webinar. Okay. So in the next few slides, we're going to get your juices jangling, basically. And we're going to give you some real questions you can ask yourself and get real actions you can take in 2016 to make your business a little more fun and more profitable. Set your commitment. Make it realistic. Don't make it about money. Make it about how your life will change because of your efforts. You know, maybe one of the things that you do is, you know, as you're earning more money this year, you reward yourself out with a night of, you know, uh, a date night. Oh, is your wife in the background? No, she's not, <laughs> but I'm going to have her watch the replay. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I, I think what's interesting is a lot of people make the mistake of last year. They say, this year I'm going to make $275,000 a year or whatever that number is, but let's just throw it this year. This year, I really want to challenge you, put that why behind it. You know, I, I had somebody say to me the other day, Colleen, I just want to show my brother-in-law that I can do this or I they had something to prove and that was that driving motivation you could feel the fire you know show, showing those naysayers that they were wrong but the other piece is post your goals like you know the pictures of the Porsche Cayenne if that's what you want if that's what really motivates you is if pulling into your driveway in that car get pictures post it visualize it imagine yourself driving it but also switch to that spot where you say, well, if I want to achieve this, this, that, why, that Porsche Cayenne is my why, giving, telling those naysayers are wrong is my why, then I need to break it down by month to figure out what I need to do to make that happen. And then that month turns into weeks and, the, you know, blah, 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 blah. You break down your goals. But if you don't, I'm telling you, if you don't have a big enough why, you won't take the energy to do the work to really go after that commitment and break down those goals because the why is just something that you don't feel. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that the key thing is until you know where, until you know where you're going, you're not you're not going to be able to get there. We we as we all want our business owners and our clients to to dream dream big things, but dreaming things big things and then not having a plan to actually reach that dream it really is just a dream it's just a hope so the key thing is to put is to take that dream and put it into an actionable plan that will allow you to eventually reach that destination yeah. you know, your, your neighbors are not going to support your Porsche dream unfortunately I've, <laughs> I've asked my neighbors and they don't want to give me a Porsche <laughs> Find an accountability tool. That's a, it's a huge thing. I mean, most, most of us go into small business because we don't want to have a boss anymore. You know, we don't want to be accountable to anybody. And then we realize we're accountable to our customers. We're accountable to our employees, but we also have to be accountable to the business. So you need an accountability tool to help you do that. Um, you many, know, whether you find that in Small Business USA or some other program or person, be sure that you're preparing to have the, be sure that you're preparing yourself to have the support that you need when you need it. Everyone needs help through those challenging, challenging goals. You know, everyone will help you lose weight if you ask them to remind you and be their person. But to Brian's point earlier, they're not all going to help you get that Porsche or be richer than them or, or whatever it is. I mean, when you're, when you're recruiting that accountability partner, you've got to let them know what you need. Um, that they can only help you if you really help yourself by telling them what, what, what are the things that are, are holding you back and what are the things that you need to be held accountable for. I mean, if you're calling his husband and you're, and you're asking, and you're asking uh, your daughter to drink more fluid, if she doesn't have triggers to do that, then and she's not going to be successful at holding you accountable to your goal to your goals and expectations you have to let people know what your standards are um, you set your standards high and your accountability partner holds you to high standards if you set your standards low they hold you accountable to low standards and you're not going to achieve the results you want to achieve so members this is where i want to jump in a little bit and just remind you to leverage your bo your board to hold you accountable to your goals we get really into in these boards like here's a problem i have let's dig in let's ask the whys let's really dig deep and get you out of the trenches and look at the problem in an easier way or come up with solutions for you but also ask your board to hold you accountable if you want to make a million dollars this year you gotta, you know, this is the perfect place to make that happen, right? I mean, they're, they're gonna hold you accountable to it. So it's about being honest with what your goals are and sharing with the people who are gonna get you there. Uh, customers, this is my favorite. Who is your customer? Um, I gotta tell you, most business owners over market by 3,000% because they don't, really answer, they don't really understand the answer to this question. We see it over and over and over and over. Where you believe that your pool of clients is huge, there's only 3% that are actually your true customer. So how do you find them? Members, yeah, I mean, if, we're, we're putting up the e-learning marketing system now. Many of you have already spent time going through this module and have spent time during your private coaching really being challenged on this. If it's been a while, it's always good to go back in and revisit this, we especially like the worksheets in, in Series 4 that challenge you to assess your current clients in a different way. We've seen great success when business owners put in the time for a variety of reasons to, to analyze this. True, Brian. It, it helps create a very clear message. It communicates directly to them and their pain. Whether you're not having the right gift for Valentine's Day or the pain that they're struggling with in their business, it really is figuring out who they are, identifying your customer and who you want them to be as well. And if you know, if you have a real clear indication of who they are, it's going to be much easier to find them. So if you do nothing else today after this webinar, I want you to spend time to figure out what they want, not what they need, but what they want from you. People don't need a Mercedes, they want a Mercedes. But why? 
Oh, I don't know. I, I want a, I know why I want a Mercedes. <laughs> let's let's get back on track. Want sells. So why is want sells? A need doesn't sell. I, I couldn't even tell you um, what your customer wants, their desires, the emotional trigger is what makes them buy from you. It's not what they need. We see this every week in the B2B world. If you ever said the words, well, everyone everyone needs us. I mean, think about that. Everyone needs us. So if I'm a referral partner and I'm working with you, I know a lot of everyone's. Um, and I'm not going to know who to introduce you to. Everyone cannot be your customer. So dig deep, people. <laughs> it's really about digging in. You know, a few slides ago, you know, we, we isolated this girl and we said, okay, this is where she is. She's a student. She goes for coffee every afternoon at this location. This is what she does, isolate it. And there's so many different ways. We have a lot of tools that can help you isolate this customer, but you can do some of this on your own too. So I would just challenge you to take some time and look at your existing clients and figure out who they are and, and how you got them and where they were when you found them and really dig down into all those questions, who, what, when, where, why, how, and say, this is who my customer is and, and get that group of people from 1 million potential customers down to 1,000 and you're going to be so much more effective and you spend less money, have a better return on your investment. But I want to, I want you to also think more importantly, you're going to have a better return on your time. And if you are targeting your clients right, your customer right, then you are going to spend a lot less time needing them and more time converting them. Yeah, I mean, you know, just, just, oh, uh, just briefly before we jump on to identifying your USP, I mean, if, if you're trying to imagine the time drain of trying to, of trying to meet with everyone. If everyone's your potential customer, trying to have conversations with everyone is going to sink your business. So you got to be real specific about who you want to talk to and why you want to talk to them. Yeah, dig, 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 dig. Figure out that. That's one of the, your most important questions in marketing that you can answer for yourself. Absolutely. All right, last one, you. Identifying your unique selling proposition. I mean, you, there's, there's a lot of competition in the marketplace and you have to, you have to be able to stand out from the crowd. So when you're thinking about what makes you unique, you, you want to think about what makes you unique from your competitors. What is, what is it about you that brings your customers to you? Um, sometimes you're too, too close. You're too involved. I mean, one of the things that I often suggest for people who tend to fall in love with their own ideas and vision is to talk to their customers and see why their customers work with them. Why do they work with them as opposed to one of their competitors? And that can be great intelligence about what makes you unique, what, what your unique selling proposition is. Yeah. You know, um, I, the bucket is here because um, the, someone, someone very smart, smarter than me once said that, Identifying your own USP is like standing in a bucket and trying to pick it up and trying to pick yourself up. You, you're not, you can't do that alone. You need to really look outside and identify. So we're going to give you a couple tools to help identify your USP today, your unique value proposition, so you can better market yourself. But also, to Brian's point, you've got to bring in others to do this, you need a unique perspective all the time in everything you do and an honest perspective. And sometimes you don't normally get that. You know, you're at a networking event and everybody at that networking event, you know, if you tell them you have a great idea, well, they're not going to say that's the dumbest idea I ever heard. They say, oh, that's a great idea. You know, I'm calling from Small Business USA. I'd love to get you to refer people to my business. You know, that's what's really going on in their head. And if they tell you what you're doing wrong and that this is a terrible idea, chances are they risk losing, building a relationship. So you need to surround yourself with people who really trust you, but also have a great streamline to honest communication from your members. And I'm going to give you um, a really quick example. So I have a member who runs a software program and I challenge the usability of the product because 
you know, they made it look easy. But I, as an outsider, I struggled to use this product. It was, it was a little clunky. It was hard to navigate. And this was their unique selling proposition. It was the easiest to use. Well, you know, they were standing in their own bucket. It, it was easy to use for them because they understood it. They had a different set of knowledge. So even though their unique selling proposition was this is the easiest, use, easiest to use software program, because they were standing in their own bucket and trying to lift it up, they didn't have that, that, that true perspective. So, you know, I challenged it and I said, hey, here, you know, this isn't as easy to use. That's our job, right? We've got to kind of help them see what is. And, and the very first thing that they did is, well, let, let us set up something on your phone so you can access it better. And no, it is important for me to maintain my role as a customer, if I'm going to be able to give you great feedback. And whether you choose a consultant or you choose a member, uh, I want to say a member, that's who our customers are, members, but um, one of your customers, you need to have that steady stream of honesty and perspective in order to identify this. So, you know, let's, let's kind of dig in a little bit to kind of help you start figuring out what your unique selling proposition is and, and how you can overcome this kind of on your own and use some tools. Yeah, I mean, let's start with a few tips. I mean, if you think your, your, your unique selling proposition is you, uh, that's a problem. I mean, I, I guarantee your parents think you're unique and wonderful, um, but being <laughs> able to articulate to the, to the, rest, of the uh, rest of the world that you're, you're simply, you're, you're unique selling proposition is simply you and you are simply better than others. That's not going to work well. Price is not a great USP because if you get, if you start to get into the, the I have the lowest price, there's always going to be someone who's going to bid lower and who's going to bid unprofitably. And that's the last thing you want to do is bid unprofitably. I know your customer uh, customer service is outstanding, but I hate to break it to you. Everyone else is, is outstanding too. when they're talking, about when they're marketing Great. and everybody has a better team than the, than the next business owner. So um, have you ever met someone who offers really crappy service who walks up to you at a network event and says, hi, I'm Brian. I offer really crappy service. <laughs> you know, on that note, they, you know, they did a little bit of a study and they took uh, this 81% of business owners believe they deliver exceptional, not good, not great, but exceptional service. And in the same study, of those people, only 15% actually acknowledge that they they received good service. So your perspective, again, is skewed. Of course you're delivering great service. You're delivering the best service you know how to. But your customers are expecting something different. So service is also one of those, those levelers that needs to um, – it's never going to be a unique selling proposition, but some of the pieces of what you do that are special or different, maybe actually. One th before we just before we step on there, just think think about your enti the entire relationship that you have with your customer as an experience. That they not only want to get a service, but they want to come away with an experience that's going to be memorable, so, uh, memorable enough where they're going to tell others and want to consume more of that service. So don't think about it as I do X for Y, I do X for money. Think of it as I provide an experience to my customers that they're going to remember. Yeah. So if you're overwhelmed right now, call Brian. <laughs> Seriously, this is what we do. Most business owners will fit into two camps. The first camp thinks they have it all figured out, but they don't. And then that's the most frustrating because they're hurting themselves and their teams. Uh, would you say the second is those who are overwhelmed by trying to figure out how they're different? Absolutely. If you look at statistics, 85% of business owners get this piece wrong. Let's start with a few tips that work for everyone. We dig a lot deeper in our marketing master class and with our members to help you truly stand out. And, and be able to communicate how you stand out in all your material. Yeah. And so if you, if you here are a couple common mistakes, if you think that your USP is any of these, you're in trouble. Um, 
So here's a great start. Um, Google your industry. So check out your competition. You are going to be so surprised. Let, let me just, it, it's fascinating to me, and I'm going to challenge you today. If you have not done this already, we do this as part of our um, individual coaching, and it's very, very eye-opening. Everyone has an eye-opening eye experience. Go to Google, and I want you to put in, first of all, put in what you do. If you're a marketing consultant, put in marketing consultant. That's totally fine. Type in, if you're in Boise, Idaho, put marketing consultant in Boise, Idaho in Google. First of all, do you come up? That's one thing. But there's probably about 10 other guys that show up on this, right? So if you, if you think you have your unique selling proposition, you've written that down. Here is what it is. This is what, I, this is what makes me different than everyone else. And then here's the second thing. We call it primary market, market dominating position and secondary market dominating position. You write those two things down. The two things that separate your consulting firm or your shoe store or whatever it is from every other shoe store out there. I want you to write those two things down and then go to Google. Now I want you to Google shoe stores or marketing consultants in Boise, Idaho, wherever you are, whatever your business is. I want you to use terms that you believe that your business or your customers are going to use. And I want you to go find five of your competitors and look at their websites and go to the first website and take a look at it and ask yourself, what is this guy, store, girl, whatever, what do they stand for? What does this business stand for? And you're going to get a feel, just, we call it above the fold, just what you see on the first top part of your website. You don't scroll, don't, all you have to do is look above the fold. What does the customer see? What does this competitor stand for? And then I want you to do that same thing for four more co competitors. It's eye-opening, you guys. I will bet you will look at number one and number two of, on your list of your market dominating position and secondary market dominating position a lot differently. I bet... My money is on the fact that you don't stand out from those other five guys. And your goal with marketing is to figure out how to stand out. The other piece is talking to that pain point, right? If your pain point that you're, you know, from the previous slide, if, you're, if you know what their pain point is, what they want, does your website say that? All these questions, this is what is going to differentiate you from anyone else. And one, one point that I want to make just before we move on is how easy it can be to differentiate yourself from the pack. I mean, you're going to do that Google search and you're going to find that they have, your competitors have 20 to 25 years worth of experience. They offer the lowest price and they have great customer service. Well, they, they basically have, have just said the, the three things that, uh, if, there, if those things are your unique selling proposition, you're not unique at all. So this really, this Google search really presents an opportunity for you to see the mistakes that other people are making and not repeat those mistakes and build, build your brand in a way that differentiates you from the back. Agreed. Great point. So we're, let's... Let's think about other ways in which we can figure out what makes us different. And I covered this one a little bit earlier, but do a survey of your best customers. What, what made them choose you? That could be some of the greatest intelligence that you're ever going to get as to what makes you unique. Remember how hard that is too for your customers to answer. So if you just call them up and say, Hey Brian, how am I doing? Well, Generally, people don't, most people don't want to cause disruption. So they, they don't want to have those tough conversations, especially not on the spot. But if you called them up and, and said, hey, you know, I'm working on my marketing, and can I just ask you a couple questions that might help me market myself better? You know, then you've kind of set them up, right? They're, they're, now you're opening the reason why they need to give you feedback. But then when you ask questions like, you know, what made you buy from me? And, you know, maybe they're going to say location. Maybe they're going to say, you know, of course they're going to say, oh, well, Brian, I bought from you for you. You're my favorite. That's, you can't put that. Like we talked about in the beginning, you, that's not your unique selling proposition because 
everybody builds relationships, right? That's how you're going to close a deal is that relationship. However, it's not a unique selling proposition. So you have to work to get the right information from your clients and say, well, you know, what was the trigger? What was, you know, what was the reason that you decided you needed this service in the first place? Those are better questions that are going to help you get better answers to see why people really connect with you. A lot of times it will be, the relationship will be a big key in it. And they may say, I, I chose you because I trusted you. Okay, well now there's some nice intelligence as to something that you're bringing to the table um, that, you'll, that you'll want to repeat in future encounters. And that doesn't mean that trust is your unique selling proposition because we hope that's assumed in every business transaction even though that we know that's not always the case. But yeah, don't, don't discount the fact that you're a good relationship builder as part of this process, but don't use it as your unique selling proposition. Great point. Well, ask who do you want to be? This is this is an important question because one of the things that we run into with a lot of small business owners are the clients they're serving now are not necessarily the clients that they want to be serving in the future. So it's less a case of finding more of what they currently have and more a case of finding more of what they don't currently have. Um, so it's important to figure out who you want to be doing business with so you can figure out how to stand out as a business and figure out how to differentiate yourself from the pack who is serving that target market. Yeah, I think this tends to be underestimated. Your brand is critical and creating, creating your brand is a really important piece of your USP. Brand is something that encompasses your entire business and you have to know what it is and you have to prove it every day. If you're going to deliver a certain expectation, you need to ensure that your entire team understands and abides by it. You need to set rules and behaviors in place that support your differentiators. You know, here's a quick gut check. Quick gut check if you have a team. Ask your team and don't lead them, guide them or anything. Just ask a question. Maybe even if you have a bunch of them, have them write their answer on a piece of paper. Ask them, what do we stand for? And if you get one answer, great job. Great job. Chances are you're going to get more of the one answer. And that means that you're in trouble. Your brand is a little bit at stake there. So here, here's a couple of tools that are, are, are really helpful for our members. We've got our elevator pitch template. How do you succinctly describe what you do, who you do it for, and the benefits of what you do in a 30-second second time period? So that's, that elevator pitch template is, is very, very good and very helpful. And the template on creating your market dominating position. So these are basically two tools that our members use that force them to really sit back and think strategically about what differentiates them from the pack. What are the what are the benefits of what they provide? And it and it asks them to be able to succinctly state them in a very short period of time. Um, there are also some other tools that we can point out in the marketing program that will teach you how to best communicate your primary market dominating position through drip campaigns, through email, through social media, uh, and through advertising. You know, if you're not a member, we have a couple offers that can get you started. Whether you want to test the waters with our marketing masterclass or jump in and really make things happen this year. So, um, and we also have some exciting news for all of you. Um, we just want to share this with our members. So um, to the left, you're going to see our normal list of benefits that we offer all of our small business owners and, and why what we do is really important. And it's, it looks complicated, but it's wrapped into a nice little uh, program here that's easy to follow. But also um, one thing that we created that we've added and we'll see this spring is networking golf. So all of our members, you're going to once a week, about once a week, get an email that invites you to golf with people who you need to know who can, who can help your business, who could be potential clients. And uh, we're really, really excited about this. It'll be one of, uh, it, it will be one of the largest networking programs for golfers out there. And it kind of skips all of the beginning steps. You'll be able to go in there and just invite anybody you want to know to go and golf with you. And we're working on some great pricing and, um, 
working with the country clubs to really give you some great benefits. So that is all yours. Another thing, members, is that this is all yours too, the marketing class. Um, oh, the date on this is wrong. I believe it's February 26th. But um, it's every other Thursday at 4 p.m. And it's an hour. So, you know, non-members, get out your credit cards. We only have a limited number of seating because we want to keep this open for our members as well. But we really want to make sure that it's a mastermind style. You have time to ask questions. We're going through material that you will get beforehand. You'll have two weeks of material and then we'll review that those two weeks of material and answer questions and talk about how you can really apply it to your business. So really excited about these two new benefits all of our members are getting. And we're really excited to offer Marketing Masterclass to those of you who may not be members already. So we think this is a great point of entry for you to kind of get your business up and running. We know that marketing is 60% relative to your success as a business owner. So it's a great way to jump in. So let's recap, shall we? First step, embrace your past. Really take a look at what mistakes you've made, embrace them, and figure out a better way to do it. Don't keep making the definition of insanity, right? Continue to do things you've always done. Albert Einstein taught us that. So embrace your past. Then we talked about finding a better path to success. How can you find a better way to do it? How can you stop making the same mistakes but replace those mistakes with, with a new set of tools or a new way of doing things? We challenge you to work smarter. And smart for us is long, you know, as well as being specific, measurable, action, blah, 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 is also about saving money and time because we know those are the two things you as a business owner wants. I think you'll definitely see that with the marketing masterclass. You'll without question be challenged on that and helped through that piece with Small Business USA. We talked today about embracing your why and making sure your why is big enough to get you over those hurdles and, and climbing Mount Everest and figuring in, out that piece of your business. We talked about your customer profile Dig into your customer profile and understand who they are so you can better find them, better use your time, and better market to their wants, not their needs. We challenge you to get out of your bucket and really look at your business with a fresh set of eyes, compare yourselves to the competition, and really understand who you are and what you mean to your potential customers. And lastly, we want you to use a better toolbox. Whether it's Small Business USA, it's Marketing Masterclass, whatever you use, you use a better toolbox. There are so many tools out there to help you do things better. Sometimes that tool is just your phone. Sometimes if you're really bad at holding your contacts, you let, really leveraging tools that you have that are comfortable is a great place to start. Sometimes it's participating in a program that's gonna really help you get there and answer all your questions. But um, we really, you know, we've covered a lot today in a short amount of time. So, it, you know, maybe you want to say your, our final words of closing, Brian, and, and spare everybody my talking any longer? Yeah, I mean, I, the, ultimately, one of our whys is, is we want small business to be successful. And we know that sales and marketing is a substantial piece of your success. So we, what, what Colin and I have been committed to doing is bringing you some of the, the best tools to help you achieve that success. We started with the e-learning program and, and realized that we needed to supplement the e-learning program with a marketing masterclass so that you're getting the full benefit, so that you're getting the structure, um, the structure of a weekly meeting to hold you accountable to kind of to teach you the concepts that you need to help you be real strategic about your marketing. So we're, we, as always, are extremely committed to the success of your small business and are, gonna, are always going to look to bring you the tools that you need to help you be successful. Great. Well said, Brian. Thank you for joining us today. We are so happy to have everyone here. We hope we helped you a little bit, and we hope to see more of you on the 26th. There's great information on this site that you'll get around the marketing masterclass we'll send you all of our offers obviously and um, make sure that you participate but really really if you have any questions you know brian or i are very available 
um, go to smallbusinessus.com. Um, you can reach out to Brian at brian at smallbusinessus.com. I'm at Colleen at smallbusinessus.com. Visit our website. Um, there's lots of ways to contact us there. And uh, we hope to see you on February 26th. And members, thank you. We wouldn't be who we are today without you. Have a great day. Here's to your success. Bye, Brian. Thank Bye. You.